Hi, today we'll be discussing about one of the important questions that you got in Chikma. <laughs> the question speaks about metachromatic granules. When it comes to microscopy, you come across two important words. One is fluorescence, the other one is metachromaticity. If it's fluorescence, for example, I hit an object using light of a particular color. Color in terms of science becomes wavelength. So for example, if I hit a compound using a particular color called as wavelength, if it gives out a different color, a different single color, it's called as fluorescence. I repeat, if I hit a compound using one color, it gives out a different color, that's called as fluorescence. But if I hit the same compound using a color, but the compound chooses to give out multiple different colors, that is called as metachromaticity. So remember, metachromaticity is the method by which you hit a compound using one color, colored light, but the thing gives you multiple different colors. Okay, what exactly is it related or how exactly is it related to metachromatic granules? Metachromatic granules are made up of polymetaphosphate clumps. Polymetaphosphate clumps are useless or non-used, unused phosphate molecules depositing inside the cell. Ask yourself how many types of uses that you have for the intracellular phosphates. If I ask you what is the use of phosphate, you'll start telling us about the bone formation, teeth formation, calcium utilization, etc. etc. But think about the intracellular functions of calcium. If you list it, the most common functions of intracellular phosphate would be first, your second messenger signaling in the form of or in the form of IP3 DAG system. Second, in the form of energy molecule called as ATP. Please remember one thing, it is also useful for covalent modifications of enzymes intracellularly present for basic phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. So here at this point of time, when I say it is useful in the form of energy molecules, remember ATP is a high energy molecule, but at the same time you have compounds like GTP, CTP, TTP and UTP. Remember these compounds are integral components of every DNA and RNA. So it means to say in a cell if a phosphate is actually accumulating without being used, it means that phosphate was not used for converting a nucleoside into a nucleotide. That is, adenosine remains as adenosine, it does not become adenosine monophosphate, which will take it up into the pathway of adenosine triphosphate. So it means DNA synthesis is not happening in that cell. That means replication of the cell is not happening. It means the cell has become dormant. That would retrogradely tell you that the cell is actually undergoing starvation. So imagine this is a method, metachromatic granules, which contains polymetaphosphate clumps, is a method by which you understand the cell is starving. The cell is starving, it shows you by forming metachromatic granules. That does not mean every single bacteria who is going for metachromatic granules is actually undergoing starvation. Starvation is one of the reasons by which the phosphate has not been utilized. Also remember, just because metachromatic granules are seen, just because you have starvation, it does not mean it has to show metachromatic granules. Remember, these organisms who exhibit metachromatic granules are actually drama queens. They are announcing the whole world that they are suffering from starvation. The most common organisms capable of showing you metachromatic granules are Mycobacteria, Cornibacterium diphtheria, Gardnella vaginalis. There is one more organism called as Spirulum volutens. Spiral bulletins exhibits its starvation or dormancy by showing metachromatic granules. So, this was first discovered in that organisms called as spiral bulletins. You also call these granules as volutin granules. So, we have three names for them. One is Babes Ernst granules based on the people who worked on it. The second is metachromatic granules based on the property called as metachromaticity. The third is called as volutin granules based on the first organism in which the volutin granules or metachromatic granules were discovered. So with this information, you should be able to answer conceptual questions based on metachromatic granules. Thank you very much.